linear systems using elimination to solve systems of equations. We've used graphing, we've used substitution, now we're going to learn about the elimination method. The elimination method is probably the most complicated, but it's necessary when dealing with more complex systems. When both equations in a linear system are in the standard form, that's ax plus by equals c, we can solve the system using elimination. The idea behind elimination method is to create a new equation from a combination of the original equations in the system. The new equation is formed by adding or subtracting the originals. When we combine two true equations, the sum or difference must also be true. Now, when we solve for a system of equations, as I said before, we take two equations that are, are in the ax plus by equals c, and notice these both are already in that form, and we add them or subtract them. And so we have an example here of 5x minus 6y equals 32, and 3x plus 6y equals 48. So let's just add these two equations together. What's so cool about it is when we add them, we get 8x here and 6x plus a negative 6x is a 0. So there you go. We've eliminated the y. And now we're going to add these two. That's 48 plus a negative 32, which is a subtraction. So 8 take away 2 is a 6. 4 take away 3 is a 1. I have 8x equals 16. Well, I, now I have an equation I can solve. So I divide both sides of this by 8. And my resultant is x equals 2. Very good. We're not done. We still have to find y. Okay. Well, now we're going to substitute in. We're going to do a little plug and chug to get my y back. We've done this before already. All right. So here we have... Let's go with uh, this one right here. 3x, but I know what x is. x is 2. So it's 3 times 2 plus 6y, don't know what y is yet, equals 48. Okie doke. So that's a 6 plus 6y equals 48. I take 6 away from both sides. And I have a 6y equals 42. Divide both sides by 6. And I have y equals 7. Okay, so my answer is the coordinate pair 2, 7. And that's all there is to that. Ah, but it isn't always that easy. They don't always come in nice subtractable pairs that when added together comes up as a zero. So on the next part, we're going to have a few that are going to be just a little bit tougher. As I told you at the end of the uh, last example, they're not always that neat. Well, here's an example where it's not that neat. <laughs> I have to do a little work to get to something that is subtractable or addable to make an elimination happen. So, well, I have a plus y and a minus y, Make my, why don't I wait and make my y's disappear? Well, to do that, I'm going to multiply this top equation by the 5, the coefficient of this y, and I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by the coefficient of this y. And actually, the coefficient of this y is negative 5, but I'm just going to go with 5 because there's already the subtraction there. So I'm going to multiply this whole equation, and I'm going to multiply this whole equation. So 5 times 5x is 25x. 5 times positive 3 is 15y. And 5 times negative 7 is negative 35. Okay. Now the other equation, 3 times 3x is 9x. 3 times minus 5y is minus 15y, and 3 times 23 
is 69. And now we're going to add both of these equations straight down. Well, 23 or 25x plus 9x is 34x. 15y minus 15y is 0, so we're not even going to write that down. And that all equals 69 minus 35, which happens to be um, uh, 34. <laughs> we, we divide both sides of the equation by 34, and we have that x equals 1. Okay, so there's part 1 finished. x equals 1. Part 2 of the equation is to take this and put it back into one of these two equations. I don't care which one. Let's go with uh, the top one. Okay, so now I say 5 times 1 plus 3 times y equals a negative 7. Of course, this is a 5, so I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. And I get 3y equals negative 12. Divide both sides by 3. And I get that y equals negative 4. So there's the other half. So my ordered pair for my answer is 1, negative 4. And that's my answer. 1, negative 4. So that's pretty simple. Okay? Here's a tip. If you are able to combine two original equations and both variables are eliminated, but an untrue statement results, there is no solution for the system. That means the system is inconsistent. All right, here's a demonstration of that tip. I have x plus y equals 3 and negative 6x minus 6y equals negative 12. Now, what we've done in the past is we've multiplied one of the equations so that we can come up with a solution whereby we can do a subtraction and eliminate some of the variables. So, uh, it looks pretty obvious here. I'm going to multiply everything in the top equation times 6. So what I wind up with is 6x plus 6y equals 18. Okay, now if I add these together, I have a negative 6x plus a 6x, that's a 0. And I have a negative 6y plus a 6y, that's also a 0. And I have a negative 12 plus an 18, and that's a 6. So I have 0 equals 6, and that's just not true. That's an untrue statement. And so what we have is we have a system that has no solutions. It is known as an inconsistent system. Here's a tip. If you are able to combine the two original equations and both variables are eliminated and a true statement results, then there are an infinite number of solutions of the system, or the system is consistent and dependent. They are actually, if you graph them, the same line. Here's an example of that principle. Okay, I look at the top equation. I've got these fractions up here. Well, I can get rid of these fractions by multiplying through, let's see, by 4, I can make this a minus 3x, and if I add it to 3x, that's a 0. So I'm going to multiply through by 4, and what I'm going to get here is a minus 3x. 4 over 2 is a plus 2y, and that's a negative 4. Add them all up, I get a 0 here a 0 here, and a 0 here, so 0 equals 0. My variables are all gone, and I have a consistent statement. 0 equals 0. Can't get any better than that. The 0 is always going to equal 0. So what you've got here is you've got an infinite number of solutions. You have a consistent and dependent uh, set of linear equations.